Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about one of the most exciting topics in web development, uh, which is WebSockets. Uh, for this demonstration, we are going to be using .NET. So if you are new to the channel, I am Sahan and I have been working in the industry for over like 10 years now. Uh, currently, I work for GitHub as a senior software engineer. And uh, I also frequently blog in uh, sahansera.dev as well. So I also have a blog post written about this article. I actually did this a couple of years ago and uh, I have updated it to the latest uh, .NET version. And I have added the link uh, at the bottom of the screen so you can follow along with the code samples that I'll be showing in this video as well. So before we dive into WebSockets, let's briefly discuss how the request response model in uh, HTTP 1.1 works. So here we have a client and a server. Uh, the client initiates the handshake. So because HTTP protocol is based on TCP, uh, we have this three-way handshake going on. I have obviously left out the details, but you know, it would have like an endpoint and uh, whatever the protocol. So in this case, it would be HTTP 1.1 and the host, uh, the accept headers and things like that. So once the connection is established, now the server would say the connection is open and now you can start sending requests to it. So a typical HTTP request would be like, you know, your application sends out some data uh, to the server, the server would process it, and then the server would send you back a HTTP response. With HTTP 1.1, either of the sites can close the connection. So by sending uh, the connection close header, obviously there will be more requests uh, and responses, uh, you know, in between, but uh, just, just for the sake of simplicity, I have left out uh, all those things. So prior to HTTP 1.1, there was HTTP 1.0. Uh, we used to open and close connections every single time, which was like very uh, inefficient. However, with the introduction of HTTP 1.1, uh, we can actually use the same connection to send data back and forth. So you can read more on this uh, under the RFC 2616. Uh, this is a link down below. Um, you can check it out. So if you have a closer look, it says uh, prior to persistent connections, a separate TCP connection was established to fetch each URL increasing the load on HTTP servers, causing congestion on the internet. With the RFC 2616, they introduced the concept of persistent connections, where you can establish a connection between the client and the server, and then you, you can reuse the same connection over and over again to send data back and forth as we discussed earlier. So issue with the previous request response model was that the client has to always send a request to the server, and the server has to process it and send it back. So there's this back and forth going on. But what if uh, we want to create something that works in real time so the application can push data to the clients without the need for the client to call the server for updates. So WebSocket is a two-way communication protocol between the client and the server. And uh, it uh, enables like a long-lived bidirectional um, connection between them. So we will have a look at how uh, this magic happens under the hood. Just like before, uh, we have an opening handshake and uh, it would be like a get call to whatever the WebSockets endpoint that we have. Again, we are using the HTTP 1.1 and now we have two main request headers called up upgrade WebSocket and connection type to upgrade. Once that's done, the server would say, hey, I support WebSockets and the protocol is HTTP 1.1. The HTTP code is 101, which is to say the, the connection is going to change and then it says like switching protocols. So after that, either of the parties, which is the client and the server, they can push data uh, back and forth. So that allows us to have this bi-directional messaging. Once that's done, uh, either of the parties now can close the connection by using the WebSocket close uh, headers. So in the next um, section, we will have a look at this uh, in action uh, by using .NET. Now let's take a look at what we are going to be building today. I have a .NET WebSocket server running here at port 5001. That's on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I have gone to that URL and also I have gone to the Swagger uh, documentation. At the bottom, we have the console opened up. Uh, that is just a Chrome uh, console. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be using JavaScript's WebSockets API as a client and then use that to communicate with the server. So let's go ahead and instantiate that one first. Okay, so before we send a message, let's go over to the network tab and have a look at the connection. 
so remember that we discussed how the status code is going to be 101 so that's what you see over here and my websockets endpoint is localhost 5001 slash ws and in the request headers if i have a closer look at the connection it says upgrade and also there should be another one saying upgrade to websocket there we go so those are the headers that we saw earlier in the uh, the slides and then that's exactly what this has done so under the hood when we use the javascript client or whatever the client that we use to communicate with the server it has to send these uh, headers along with the request so that the server knows this is uh, incoming web sockets request so i need to upgrade the connection and then if we have a look at the response headers it should say upgrade to websocket and then the connection header is also set to upgrade and also it says the status code is 101 switching protocols let's head over to the console again and then now we will send a message to the server yeah so it said uh, undefined over here but if we have a look at the network tab and go to the messages section yeah so this is a message that we sent over uh, from the uh, the console so it says client hi and then the server sends back to us saying hello you said client hi so that's a very simple demonstration of the websocket server it doesn't have to be like you know the client always initiating the communication uh, the server can also now push data back to the client as well let's now head over to the code and have a look at how we can create this application creating an asp.net project is pretty simple uh, i'm using the .NET cli uh, over here so onto your left we have the .NET new web api so that's essentially going to be creating a new .NET, uh, asp.net application and we are going to call it websockets tutorial and then we can create a new solution and then add the project that we created earlier to that solution so once you do that uh, you should be able to see a project structure very similar to the one on the right hand side so here we have the uh, the controllers, the configuration, the program.cs, startup.cs, and uh, all the other boilerplate stuff. We are going to be using a package called SignalR. What it essentially does is it will do all the plumbing that's required to stand up uh, a WebSocket server uh, under the hood, so that we don't have to worry about any of the you know the nitty gritty of that. Because essentially, what we need to do is to create a create an endpoint that will accept a WebSocket's connection and then uh, respond back to the client. And also you can follow the link uh, I have mentioned down below uh, to learn more about SignalR. So when you open up the startup.cs, you would see a structure very similar to this. So if we go into the configure method over here, so we need to add the WebSockets middleware like this. So here we have the I application builder uh, object and then we are going to use dot use WebSockets. So this is actually coming in from that SignalR. Uh, package that we just added that's all you need to do in terms of like configuring the middleware for the websockets connection and then now we can write the controller for this so in terms of the controller side of things uh, here we have uh, the endpoint called slash ws uh, you can call it anything that you want and uh, here we are doing like a check to see if the current http context or the current request is actually a websockets request if that's the case, we are going to say uh, HTTP context.websockets.accept websocket async. So that is going to transition the request to a websocket connection as we saw earlier in the demonstration. And then after that, we have this method called echo. What it essentially going to do is we take in the websocket connection that we instantiated above uh, over here. And then uh, we will create a new buffer. That's like a new byte four kilobyte buffer to just to accommodate whatever the message that we are going to be receiving from the client side of things because we don't know how long it's going to be so we will do that and then we will say websocket.receive async uh, and then we will pass in that buffer so that whenever we get a new request uh, it will copy whatever the data that we have onto that buffer and then we will get the result out of that uh, once we have the result object we can see whether it is in closed state or not if it is not, which means it's open, uh, we are going to say server says hello and you said this. So that's essentially the buffer that we got from the client side of things. Uh, and then we will say like websocket.send async and then it will uh, send out uh, this message to the client back. And then we will uh, clear the buffer that we had with the four kilobyte buffer that we had earlier. Uh, we will instantiate that to a new buffer 
and then we will again do the receive async method uh, on top of the websocket uh, object so it will start uh, you know listening to new messages coming in from the client side so that's pretty much the logic behind this and then uh, once we have a close status coming in from the client uh, we will say like websocket.close async so the you know uh, the client will also know the server has also ended the session from their side of things well that's it for today's video uh, i hope you enjoyed the introduction to websockets using uh, asv.net um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one